Hello and welcome back to From the Workshop with this guy, your host, Brandon Hart. We are here once again in this place, the Nimble Link Nerd Lair. And today, of all days, today, I want to talk to you about something that has become a hot, to hot topic as of recently. And that is the topic of... Yes, it's about FOTA. This is about uh, a thing called FOTA. What the heck is FOTA? Why do you care about FOTA? We're gonna talk about that. So let's just dive right in and get started. First off, what is FOTA? So first of all, hopefully we can see that. So FOTA, um, in case you're wondering what I was actually saying, F-O-T-A is firm, where over the oh <laughs> let's try that again air firmware over the air um now i will also add that there is a different version of photo that you may hear or refer to sometimes and that is d photo which is delta photo and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute um but this is what we're talking about when we say photo. We're talking about firmware over the air. And um, essentially what this does is it allows for devices that are already in the field to receive updates to its device software, to the module software uh, that actually sits on, in our case, a, a NimbleLink Skywire modem, um, and allows you to essentially fix bugs in your software uh, update new features in the software, things like that, after they're already deployed in the field. So how do you do that? Well, you push the firmware updates for your device or for the modem over the air, hence the name. So uh, that's what FOTA is. Now, why do we care about FOTA? Well, um, specific to the world of cellular these days, um, the carriers, if you think about, think about LTE first off, let's just forget everything else, think about LTE. The carriers out there, the LTE networks that are out there are supporting a huge range of functions on one single LTE network. Um, so I, I think uh, right now the, the, the latest and greatest uh, low power version of LTE is uh, NBIOT or LTEM depending upon what part of the world you're in. Um, and then, so which is which gets down to like 50 kilobits per second throughput. So just keep that number in mind. Then at the upper end of the exact same network, the upper end of that network, I think we're getting into like Cat 20, uh, some ridiculous uh, LTE categories at this point, which just have crazy throughputs. 5G, this whole gigabit idea is going to be based on LTE as well. Um, so think about that range, the, the huge, uh, difference in different technologies on the exact same network. These carriers are going to have to do a lot to optimize their networks, to roll out features, to uh, add functionality, add support for these new categories and, and new definitions that come from the 3GPP and stuff like that. How do they do that? Well, in a lot of cases, they're going to have to perform updates to their network. And, and that means updating the software in the network, updating the, the functionality of the network, which means there's going to be changes. And if the network that your devices are attached to changes, some of those changes may not be compatible with the firmware your devices in the field are already running. So they need to be updated. What's the best way to update devices that are in the field? Not jump in a truck and go out and touch every single individual one of these, which you can do. You can always plug them in with a USB cable and flash the firmware but to actually send that firmware version out over the air, over the connection that it's already got, so that it can be updated and be compatible with any of those network changes that hit. So that is critically important. Uh, I do want to emphasize that in a lot of cases, this is not just something that is a nice function or a nice feature of these LTE devices. This is a requirement. This is coming down as a hard and fast requirement from some of the carriers and from some of the network providers. And even if it wasn't, honestly, treat it as a requirement anyway, because um, you don't want to be in a situation where a change goes on to the network that these devices depend upon. Maybe you've got tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of these things in the field. 
there's no way that you could get out and touch every one of them, update every single one of them to make them compatible with that network change. You have to be able to push that out to your device. So what does that look like? Well, a couple of different things. Number one, there are two different types of photo. As I mentioned, there's normal photo where you're actually pushing the firmware file itself into the device or into the mo mo module. Um, or you may just be pushing the delta, the change in that firmware out to the device. If, if you have the capability, if you have the possibility of, of using a delta file, uh, that is always better, much, much smaller, and uh, therefore uses much less data when you're transferring it over that cellular network. Um, it also uses a lot less battery power because it takes a lot longer or a lot less time to download into your device, that kind of stuff. Speaking of battery power, you do want to make sure that you build in support into your device firmware for the photo process for your LTE device, uh, the radio, the module, the modem in our case, um, because a lot of times there needs to be coordination between your device's firmware and the photo capability of the radio that you're using. So please keep that in mind. Things like um, you know maintaining a persistent connection to allow for the full download of those things when your device normally is intended to wake up, send data, and go back to sleep again. You may have to keep it on longer in order to be able to get that firmware update. Uh, you maybe have to maybe have to do things to optimize um, the retries and and uh, you know keep your device on and keep it connected and do different things like that to kind of help coordinate the the connection and, and uh, the persistence. If you can have extra room on your device to store a second firmware version, that is a great thing to be able to do. Not everybody can do that, but it allows you to download the new version, store it locally, flash the modem from it, and then come back up again. If something doesn't work for whatever reason, if that, that new firmware version is incompatible with your device software, you can always go back. You can have your device be able to determine that and then go back to the previous firmware version. That's a nice thing to be able to do. It's not always possible, but it would be really, really great to be able to build in. Um, so how does all of this photo stuff actually happen? Good question, glad you asked. Here's what we do. So there are a number of different ways in which this happens. Um, the module manufacturers will always have some method, some procedure that they have put in place, that they have tested, that they've ensured works with their particular LTE modems um, so that they can download that firmware to the module and update itself. Sometimes that will be a system that they completely manage on their own and you just get to use. Most of the time, if they do that, they provide those systems for free. Not all the time, so check into that. Um, in some cases, the carriers themselves will have a managed system that can be used to update the firmware of the modems as well, or the modules uh, in this case. Um, so that can be something you, you might need to take a look at. In other cases, you can actually utilize an FTP service. You get the firmware file, put it on an FTP server that you manage, and then build into your device the capability to connect out to that FTP server to download that firmware version onto itself. And then lastly, there's always the option of downloading that firmware version either from the service or from a server or you know from your own FTP site or whatever, um, directly to your device's memory and then flashing it locally rather than using the modules built in photo functionality to download and pull into itself that firmware version. Um, that version, that, that procedure is probably the safest, but it does require that you build in a lot of support into your device. In any case, uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm showing a Nimblelink device here for the Nimblelink specific stuff. Refer to the individual product page on the Nimblelink website. Um, so, you know, nimblelink.com, put the, put the link down there um, and go to the specific product, the specific Skywire modem page that you're looking for and look for the application note on FOTA. It'll tell you what the specific version of the modem will require. What what methods are available for it and how you can implement it. Um, again, critically important, really not optional. You really need to build in support for FOTA into your devices. Okay, I threw a whole lot of stuff at you right there. Hopefully all of that is helpful. Hopefully it all makes sense. Um, if it doesn't for any reason, throw a comment down here. 
uh, underneath the underneath the video and, and we'll respond to those. Shoot us an email to workshop at nimblelink.com and we'll make sure we get you a response. Um, but otherwise, please like and subscribe these to these videos. Uh, we would love to have you view our future videos and not miss more important updates and information like this one. But until then, thank you very much for watching and have fun building.